Tales from the Flipside family. How's it going? Welcome back. Here we are at Haven for Heroes again. We're gonna talk a little bit about subscriptions and uh, how I do that. Um, I don't have any other uh, ways that I know to do it than the way that I do it. If you are a comic shop and you're watching this and you have a certain way that you do subscriptions and you've been super successful, please help us out. Put it in the comments, let us know. I do have some questions uh, on earlier um, videos uh, that I'd left some stuff out um, when we did the taking in a collection. So I wanted to clear up that part right off the bat is um, how I buy. And I keep my buying and that this is for magic, uh, pops, uh, comic books, toys, whatever I buy is the same way all the time. It is 40% on keys. If the toy is, uh, sells on eBay at a higher rate than manufacturer's suggested retail, I might pay 40% on it. Um, the reason I wouldn't would be how long I have to hold it. There's a lot of things that go into my thinking of when, how to buy certain stuff. Comics are definitely straight up. Keys with value is over $5, I pay 40%. It's a $10 book, you get four bucks for it. Now, bulk comics, I pay 15 cents a piece. I know guys that pay eight, and I know guys that pay 35 to 50 cents a piece. I pay, I'm in, not really the middle, but the lower end uh, at 15 cents a piece. Um, because, uh, you look at your profit margin, you figure out how long it's gonna take you to sell that item. And, you know, three to five dollar key issues really only sell for a dollar. You know, let's really be honest about the, the business, the retail business. There's very few, after they come off the new, new shelf, once you put them in the back bins, nobody really wants to pay more than a buck or two for them. So new back issues, sometimes uh, I'll keep them at cover for quite a while and then I'll move them down. But um, for the most part, it is um, you know three to five dollar key issues from days gone by, from the '90s, '80s. I get a buck a piece for them, to be honest, and that's you know. But I move them, you know. I'm all constantly moving and changing that into more collections. Um, and I believe inventory is uh, very important in this business because at any point you may not be able to get any if people stop selling or holding, uh, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, you can't get any inventory, you wanna have as much as you, uh, you can have. It's my philosophy. Um, but you also have to move it, which um, I'm getting better at. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just wanted to clear that up. I pay 40% on key issues over $10, uh, magic cards, over three dollars, they'll get forty percent cash for. Uh, everything below that is bulk ten cents um, for rares. Uh, commons and uncommons, we buy a uh, dollar per thousand. People are like, oh, people are paying. Different stores, different areas. We're in a small. Everybody knows this. I say it all the time. We're in a small market. Um, if you want to get the higher price, you know, drive forty or fifty miles to get that four dollars more per thousand. It would maybe make sense if you had a couple of hundred thousand commons, but if you have, you know, 3,000 3, commons, you really don't want to drive 50 miles to get an extra eight bucks. So that's kind of a benefit for me, is that people really, that's the price I pay in my market, because that's pretty much what I can turn around and, and make a profit at, right? So there's that. So I think I've gone into a long, long-winded part of that. Also, I wanted to say uh, our giveaway is still coming. The Predator number one, we still have it available. You need to go back to that video, make sure you comment on it. And uh, I'm gonna have Dino uh, hit that up next weekend um, and pull a name and we'll get that shipped out to you. That's all cleared away. Let's talk about subscriptions. So for me, I believe that subscriptions are a lifeblood of a comic book store. You really have to build that community, you have to build that customer base that is getting their weekly books. 
Does it have to be 100 books a month? No. Uh, really, if you can build a good group of people around that get one book a week, you know, nowadays books are four and five dollars. So, you know, if they're spending $20 a week, you're always gonna have your whale that spends $100 a week. Um, they're getting farther and few between, but you know, $40, $50 uh, a month and you have 100 subscribers, you know, you're paying a lot of bills with that. So I'll, I'll go into, so our benefit to our subscribers um, that subscribe with us. So when the books come in on Tuesday, we pull all their books first. We look at all the books and if any of them have Tufts or anything like that, the best representing books go to the subscribers first. Um, also, we bag and board their books. Also, we give them 10% off. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things that might get more people interested and involved. Usually if um, somebody shows up at the comic shop, like a artist or a writer and they sign some books, I'll make them available at cost, um, you know, at, at cover price for my subscribers. Um, we're lucky enough to have Scott Snyder stop by on a regular basis and he signs a lot of books. Uh, I don't, for my subscribers, I don't add any signature value to that. Uh, I'm lucky enough that my nephew's in the comic business, anything signed by him, I also uh, defer zero cost because he doesn't charge me anything. So <clears throat> that's a, a thing that you can do. There's a lot of things that you can add value that doesn't cost you anything for subscribers. Uh, I understand that bagging and bordering does cost you, so does the 10%. Um, but picking out uh, the best quality books for them, that doesn't cost you anything except for a little bit of time. Um, if you have events, if you, if, uh, if you have a ticketed event, maybe that you allow the, them to have a VIP where they get to come in first in the line. You know, if you, you open up at 10 for the event, and they get to come in at nine. Something like that is another thing that you could add to the subscription um, to make it added value so that you can gain more subscribers. The more subscribers you have, the better it's gonna be. It's really gonna make ordering easier. It's uh, gonna make your financial life a lot easier. Um, I've said this before, we had 50 subscribers and COVID shrunk us to four. Now we're almost back out to 20, and it does take a lot of time to build subscriptions. Um, you really have to, which we haven't been, but we're gonna have to start doing again, is everybody that comes in and buys comics off your rack that isn't a subscriber, you have to pitch them the subscription again. Um, another thing that I've done is that I've taken books that I knew were gonna be popular and not ordered enough for the walk-ins. So I've ordered maybe one copy over my subscribers. First guy that walks in gets it, but the next guy that comes in and goes, do you have this? I'm like, no, I'm, we're sold out. You know, have you ever thought about getting a subscription? Um, do I lose a sale that way? Yes, but hopefully I can make a subscription and that's a long-term customer. And if you watch Shark Tank or any kind of entrepreneurial uh, show on YouTube, on television, long-term customers are your value. Like your repeat customers, how many times do they come back? That's why subscription-based subscription businesses are so huge. Hello Fresh. I mean, do I have to tell them all to you? You, you? you see them all the time. I mean, we've had them in the collectible industry. You know, Comic Tom's got his own subscription-based. It's a great business, right? The customers are returning every month, um, you know, and you're just shipping out the product over and over and over again. Um, and it kind of, you can forecast how much money you're gonna have, right? So if you have everybody signed up uh, the month prior, you know exactly how much money you're gonna have. And then if they don't unsubscribe, that's the other thing is, is that, you know, the subscription base where you give the credit card, they just keep trading, it, charging your credit card is the best. I don't take a credit card to our comic shops that do after three weeks or after a month, they charge the c comics um, to your credit. I don't do that. Um, I've been in tight spots in my life. You know, we kind of run this 
shop by the seat of our pants at times. Um, I would never want anybody to charge my credit card uh, on, a, on comic books just because I couldn't make it down. Maybe I'm having a tough financial time. Um, you have to kind of get to your subscribers and say, hey, listen, just let us know, right? If, if you can't, if you're gonna give up for a little while, listen, we'll, that's fine. We'll eat the books that's in there, but please don't wait six, eight months. <laughs> Uh, we won't hold six or eight months, usually after about three months. We are long term. We will do three months. After three months, if you haven't picked up any books, we're going to stop pulling for you. Then we're going to try to contact you. Hey, the train is in. <laughs> I don't know if you all could hear that, <laughs> but the, tr the train just is pulling in. Yeah, we're a train stop. Also a Poke stop. That's another thing. You can sign up to be a uh, Pokemon Go stop. That's also a way to get people into your shop, but we're on subscriptions. Um, yeah, I mean, but you have to do what's best for you. I mean, like I said, there are shops that do take a credit card and after three weeks, after four weeks, you know, whatever it is in their contract with the, the person, um, they charge them. I don't have a contract with my subscribers. They put their name and phone number down and, you know, we make a handwritten, actually we make a printout of what they get and then, you know, we're pulling them every week. So... I know our system is kind of kind of a little archaic, kind of a little, um, you know, very mom and pop, very, very small scale. Um, and it, you may want to be a larger scale. You may be going into a large scale area. Um, if you look at what Midtown does, they really work on volume. Uh, a lot of times they'll do, if you're subscribing, they'll do 35% off. And if you get a certain number of books, you'll get free shipping. Um, man. That's, uh, that's not a lot of profit. Uh, you're barely paying for the guy that's shipping these books out for you. Um, until you get to a certain number, but you know, I don't know what their numbers are. I'd love to, if there's anybody that works for Midtown <laughs> who works in that subscription department and knows how many subscriptions are out there, please hit me up in the comments. I'd love to know. Very curious, because um, I'd like to know where the comics are going to because uh you know i'd like to have a second shop one day and uh you know if you had the idea of what where comics are selling you could know where to put your shop but another thing on subscriptions is be ready to when books are coming out not everybody goes through the previews guide i have subscribers that go through every line and read every word in the previews guide and i have ones that won't even take a previews guide but know what they like know the authors they like Kind of add that to their subscription right right in there. Like, oh, this buys every Lemire, buys every Magnola. And then when you're ordering, you look over these things and you say, hell, there's a new Magnola book. He doesn't have it on a subscription, but I'll recommend it to him. Um, I have subscribers that actually have things down that says, uh, yeah, every Lemire book uh, or every Magnola book. And I know that anytime a new book comes out, I have to order it. Uh, Tinian is another one that everybody wants at least the first issue to try it out um, and then then they may put it on their subscription list uh, that's another thing is you really have to be catering to your subscribers they're helping you out a tremendous amount um, by providing you that volume and that money that can pay a lot of the bills you're walking, like we're lucky we have tourists in the area. Your walk-ins, of course, are not going to be subscribers. Um, but who knows? You know, you never know. They, you know, we do ship. Uh, I'm willing to send to subscribers, but it's, uh, it's a very tough, tough game to do shipping on a weekly basis to multiple. I commend all the people out there that do it and get it right. Um, I am not a hater of any of that. I'd like to be in that game. I'm just not, we're just not there yet. Uh, but if you have any other questions about how we do subscriptions, if you're, um, have any ideas on what we could do to add to our subscribers, um, please put it in the comments, share with the community. Let us know, uh, what you think about this show. If you hate it, uh, if, uh, you think, uh, you know, I'm running my business into the ground, let me know that. That'd be good. <laughs> I already know I am. No. Uh, 
We've been around eight years, uh, we'll survive. Um, but uh, what I want you guys to do is go out there and make a comic book reader. Keep reading comics, but go out there, give a couple of free comics to a couple of kids in the neighborhood. Um, don't get the police called on you. <laughs> don't, don't ride around in a van that says free comics. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's important to, if you love comics, is to make comic readers, um, if not of your own kids, of somebody else's kids, uh, it's, it's very important to this thing that we love so much that we get some kids interested from a younger age. And uh, you know what? Hey, open a comic shop.